very much indeed, Julien, and thank you, ECHA, uh, for this opportunity. I'm going to take a slightly different approach because what, we, uh, what I'm going to talk about is what patients want from apps. So we know that the latest estimates are there are 100,000, maybe 150,000 health apps out there. But which ones are any good? Which ones do patients uh, want and trust? And what are they not finding from apps? And this is something that my organization, Patient View, has been setting out to try and find out. Now, Patient View is a UK-based um, research consultancy. We've been collecting and analyzing the views of patient organizations around the world for about the past 15 years. And we now have the capacity to reach out to about um, uh, 120,000 patient groups worldwide. And this is covering a huge range of health specialty areas, over 1,000. Um, and one of the, a lot of the feedback we were getting a few years ago was exactly this about apps. When health apps were really first coming onto the market, patients were unsure which ones were any good. How do you find them? How do you differentiate between the 20,000 glucose trackers out there? Which one is right for you? So with a lot of partners um, and stakeholder input, and which has been very much a theme of this conference, and we've worked with industry, we've worked with healthcare professionals, regulators, clinicians, everybody to try and um, um, come up with a solution to this, we produced um, a website called myhealthapps.net. Um, and this is um, a free public platform of apps which have only been tried and tested and recommended by patient organizations worldwide. So it's just one of the ways to help people, and it's not just patients, it can be carers, family members, um, and or just health conscious consumers, try to find apps that are relevant to them. So it's a very simple site. You can search um, by category, you can do a direct search by the search box, you can search by language, by platform, so you only find the ones that are relevant to you. Um, and we try and put as much information up as possible about the app developer, because one of the key things that keeps coming back from the patient research is trust. They don't know which apps to trust. So we give information about the app developer, who funded the app, whether there was a medical advisor, if it's relevant, because obviously the majority are in the health and well-being area and probably don't need medical advice, and if they have been um, uh, received regulatory approval, if that is necessary, for example, the FDA or NHS England. And we work with NHS England's Health Apps Library um, for that reason, because they're looking at it from a clinical safety perspective, and we're obviously doing it from the patient perspective, what they actually want to use. Um, and from that, we started doing more research into um, what exactly patients want from apps, but they're not finding out there. So amongst these 150,000, there are still lots of needs which aren't being addressed. And this is um, some research that we conducted this is just one slide. I can obviously share the full results outside, but I was obviously limited to one slide. Um, with the, we conducted this research. It was a global survey of patient groups, and we did this with Health 2.0. So if Pascal is still in the room, thank you very much for your support. Um, and we asked them what was missing, um, and what came out of that was, was particularly in five therapy areas. Now, this slide, I'm just going to talk you through very briefly. Because it was, we asked them, irrespective of what they're using now, what would they most want from a health app? And it's more than just information, and it's more uh, information about their conditions. It's also about the treatment choices, so they can take a more active role with their clinicians in their treatment choices and how they, they do that. They also want guidance. Um, it's not that people want to use apps in isolation. They want to use them in conjunction with their healthcare system and their physicians when they want guidance on which ones are worthwhile and they can use and which ones they can trust. So um, from this, we had at the Health 2.0 um, Europe conference um, in London last year, we held a workshop, a workshop session to bring together app developers patient groups, clinicians, um, all the various industry representatives from pharma, medtech, telecoms, mobile, um, uh, and the regulators as well, to try and get um, people together at the design and concept stage so that apps are being developed which will actually be what the, the consumer, in this case the patient, wants, um, and to really create better quality apps. 
And one of the key other areas that came out is integration, which has been a key thing to, of today's meeting. Um, patients want more integrated apps. They're already having to deal, with, depending on their comorbidities, with lots of different apps on their phones. They want them to be integrated better. They want to work better, um, to be able to share data better, but in a safe um, and, and, and structured way. Um, so we want to do more of this kind of research. We want to work with a wider group of partners as well and stakeholders, including um, a sort of behavioral change um, scientists. All of this kind of, of information is extremely interesting to us and we would welcome anybody's um, you know, interest in partnering with us on more research and more really trying to find out what's going to work for patients at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dee.